Hello and welcome, my name is Lexi and today we're going to be taking a look at the Guerlain Fall 2023 collection. So I picked up both of the palettes, six of the seven shades of lipstick and the two cases. Now the seventh shade of lipstick that I missed out on, it's that like light peachy shade. That one has been pulled from the Guerlain website and the other ones that are out of stock just say out of stock. So I'm not sure if that's gonna be coming back or not, but I did miss out on that one. So we'll see right now, these items are available on the US Garillon website and they'll be popping up at other retailers you know at some time in the future so we're gonna start off going through swatches of the shadows and the lipsticks and then we'll go ahead and take a look at some demos and some comparisons so let's start off with the packaging so the Garillon quads do come with a nice this is actually a heavy-duty velvet case so the inside is actually like a faux leather and like a vinyl material easy to clean if you need to and then the outside is going to be like a velour material we do have the fingerprint magnet cases and then it does come with a plastic tray inside as well as two utensils so you can see here that we have a foam tip applicator on each of these you can see they're going to be the same but one of them is going to have a more angled foam tip applicator and the other one is going to have an angled synthetic brush. So we've got you know two different utensils in there. Let's take a look at the actual shades and swatches. So this is 258 Wild Nudes and these are not the same formula as those that we've been seeing in the newer Guerlain quads. So these are the top two shades. These are both gonna be mattes you can see that they both lean warm. The first is kind of a deep brown. It's neutral. It leans a little bit warm, but it's a pretty neutral brown. And then we have this warm peachy beige shade. Next up, we have a, another matte, and this is kind of like a peachy pink. So it's, it's like salmon, but with a little bit extra peach in there. And then our fourth shade here is a satin. You can see it's a really beautiful medium brown. It does lean warm. You can see there's a little bit of a golden red hue to it, and it's gonna be a satin finish. Really beautiful shade, but I do have to say, I wish that they had a lighter satin in here as well. I wish that this pink shade was a satin formula instead of a matte. But let's go ahead and move on to the other palette. This is 910 Undressed Brown. And although this is deeper and doesn't straight off the bat look like colors I'd go for, this was the one that actually, you know, called to me more than 258 Wild Nudes. I do have to say though, I think the 258 Wild Nudes looks kind of, when you see the swatches, it reminds me of that new Tom Ford palette in the summer collection, which I did not purchase. So first up, we have kind of this bright, you know, kind of like a, a, a burnt pumpkin, but a little bit brighter um, satin shade. And then we have this champagne. It's like a champagne satin, but you can see that there's a peachy rosiness to it. It's kind of like the satin version of this, but a little bit lighter. Next up in the bottom row, we have a deep matte brown. And I'll put these two together so you can see how they compare. And then we have a satin, again, this is gonna be kind of more of a like maroon shaded brown. So it's gonna be like medium tone, but you've got a touch of red in there and more like of that golden hue as well. So it's gonna be kind of warm tone. And let me just swatch those browns together. So I'm gonna swatch these two here from Wild Nudes. Let's just go ahead and put them right here. So these are the two from Wild Nudes. And now let's look at these two from Undress Brown, just so you can see how they compare. Well, let's put them side by side. So Undress Brown on the ends. So you can see that they are similar, but they are not going to be the same shades, but very similar in tone. Let's move on to the eye demos before we start looking at the lipsticks. Now, just for reference, what I'm wearing today is gonna be the last demo you see. It is the 910 Undressed Brown Quad on the eyes. And just for reference, the lipstick is a satin in shade 19, topped with the gloss from the holiday collection this past year. So as we're looking at these palettes, I have some eye swatches so you can see how the shades look on the eyes first. These have a six month shelf life. They're made in France. And we have four shadows that in each 
quad that are 2.2 grams total. So 2.2 grams per each shade. So we're looking at 8.8 .8 grams for the palette. And again, you know, this is gonna be a different formula than those of the more recent quads. The more recent ones kind of have this like grippy texture to them. And this is gonna be, these mattes are really more of your traditional, you know, drier matte. It feels more like a pressed pigment. Think of perhaps the new Isam mattes or the Hindosh palettes, you know, something that's more of just like a pure pressed pigment. They are, are a little bit powdery, but not too much. They're still not quite like the Viseart mattes. If you're familiar with those, I feel like those feel more like a shadow, like an actual eyeshadow versus a pressed pigment. And I feel like these Guerlain ones feel closer to a pressed pigment. So, you know, they're, they're a little bit more powdery and dry. And I have to say the mattes, I think they're okay. I don't love them, but I don't hate them. You know, they're just, they're just fine. So they remind me a little bit of the Tom Ford matte palettes. Uh, you know, the ones that were out a couple of years ago, they've been using a, a few of their formulas. They've been really hit or miss, but like when they came out with like Make Mirage and so forth, they feel like that texturally a little bit, but I have to say that these definitely perform much better than those. I have issues with those with creasing and patchiness and then getting hard pan after a little while. We'll see how these perform with the hard pan issue, but I can tell you that they're definitely not as patchy and they last all day, even in the heat and humidity. It is incredibly humid here. You know, we're in the 90s temperature wise and I've been wearing them outside full days and they last all day. So no issues with performance with the mats. Now, you know, if your lids are a little bit moist, you know, from humidity or maybe a primer or something, you can get a little patchiness from the shadow. But if you do smooth it out with some powder initially, then you're not gonna really have an issue with that. Now, I have to say the satins, the shimmers, I really like them. They are a thin satin formula. You know, they're not too, there's not too much like fallout or anything with them. They give you shimmer, but it's still, you know, it's not blingy. It's subtle, but impactful at the same time. And I have to say, I really like the formula. Now, when you're looking at the two palettes, the 258 Wild Nudes, I think it's a great set of neutrals. If you really like matte eye looks, I think this is a good palette for that. However, I wish that they, I personally love satins and shimmers on my lids to just give them a little bit more movement, even if it's not my all over color. So I personally wish that they had a lighter tone satin in here because this deeper tone satin is just a little bit harder for me to use, like kind of all over. Um, but I do think, depending on how you use it, it could be really beautiful. But with three out of four matte, the shades being matte, then, you know, I think if you're interested in this palette, you definitely want to focus more on matte looks in general, or perhaps mix it in with some other palettes. So I think that's a nice palette, but it's not my favorite. My favorite is actually going to be the 910 Undress Brown. And, you know, I wasn't sure. I think the orange is gorgeous. And I love the way it looks in swatches, but I wasn't really sure how I'd like it on my eyes. It does remind me of some other palettes that I have in the past, you know, particularly a Suku palette. And I have to say, I really do like it. I think it's a nice shade. It's hard for me to wear that orange, but what I think really saves this palette and makes this a true winner is that lighter champagne shimmer. And being able to top that on top of the other colors, it kind of brings out the undertones of those colors. So I have neutral skin, but my friend who has a warmer tone complexion, when she puts that like deeper brown underneath and puts the champagne shade on top, it looks more purpley on her you can bring out some of those cooler tones in there now on me that doesn't really work as well because my skin tone is more neutral so it doesn't get that purpley vibe but it does get this really beautiful like murky brown that is really pretty so you can see that in the demo um you know i think it's a really nice i just love being able to mix those shades together so i think that particular shade, this like rosy champagne shade, really makes this palette something special. I also love how we have more satins and shimmers in this palette. I think all of the tones in here are great neutrals. And even if you don't necessarily want a, a super shimmery eyeshadow and you don't want to top it with the shimmers, 
just having that lighter shade in there to mix on your brush even just to perhaps you know soften or lighten a particular shade in the palette I think is very key. So this is going to be my favorite of the two eyeshadow quads and you know again since I as I mentioned you know I think the mattes are nice but they're not like anything special to me I do really like the shimmers so for me it's more worth it to have a palette with more shimmers versus the mattes and again that's gonna be personal preference but I think it's a, definitely a fantastic palette so let's go ahead and look at some comparisons of the shadows and then move on to the lips let's start off with some of the Guerlain quads and this here's the 258 Well Nudes, and this is 11 Imperial Moon. So obviously you can see we don't have a lot of similar shades, but I do wanna take a look at this pink shade here. And we'll also take a look at this champagne shade and see how that compares to the one in the other palette. So here's 258 Well Nudes, and this is the shade in Imperial Moon. So you can see that this is really gonna be more peach. Now the shimmer from Imperial Moon, let's put that right here. You can see it has more of a taupe. It's cooler in tone. There's a hint of gray to it. All right, so looking at the two from fall, this one here is Royal Jungle, number 94, or 940, sorry. And uh, let's go ahead. We're just gonna swatch all of these and see how these perform, or look down here. I'm gonna swatch them like this. You can see how much more yellow this is than the shimmer in the um, in the undressed brown shade. And you can see this is more of that putty-like consistency. So it really kind of stays put, kind of acts more like a primer. And you can see it doesn't have that powdery texture to it. So it swatches a little differently, but you can see it's significantly cooler than any of the shades in either of these palettes. This shade here is gonna be closest to our orange, but you can see this is really gonna be a gold with a little bit of orange in it. So uh, overall, that palette is gonna be fairly different from these two new ones, which lean significantly warmer overall. This is Tom Ford's Smoky Quartz. So this is the newer Tom Ford Creme formula. And let's go ahead, we're just gonna swatch these down here. It's not super similar, but the color stories, you know, do have a little bit of similarity. So I just wanted to compare here, but you can see that these are really gonna be more of like your warm clay tones. They're not as rich as the browns in the Guerlain, and they're just more of like a muted, dustier shade in general. And this is the Rose Topaz in that new creme formula from Tom Ford. I just wanted to take a look at this peachy shade and see how this compares to that. And you can see it's gonna be a bit more nude and not quite as deep, but it is a similar shade. It's just a softer version of it. All right, so let's take a look at some Chanel quads and we're gonna take a look at the tweeds. I'm gonna put these on my other arm. So this one here is Tweed Fauve. And let's go ahead and see how this performs or looks. You can see here we do have an orange. It's not going to be as shimmery. It's a little bit lighter in color. We have a gold, which is, you know, more of a, a yellow gold. And then we've kind of this purpley shade and a softer peach. But you can see that this peach is really more of a mix of the two shades in Wild Nudes and it's going to be shimmery. So not quite the same, but here's Tweed Fauve compared to the two new Guerlain quads. This one here is Tweed Brown Eye Rose. And let's go ahead and look at this. So we've got kind of some lighter, more taupey shades. Then we have this shimmery peachy pink and a deeper brown. And you can see that this brown is actually cooler in tone than these. It is closest to a light version of this top shade. And you can see that the shimmery shade here is a little bit more, it's a little bit more pink, but a softer like ballet pink versus more of the peachy tone we get in the one for undressed brown. And then this is Tweed Cuivre. And this is my favorite of the tweeds from Chanel. We've got kind of some satins here. So we have a deep, rich brown and a deep, more bronzy brown. And then we have kind of this rich gold shade and a lighter, more sheer gold. 
So you can see that the browns in here are still a little bit cooler in tone than the ones in Guerlain. The Guerlain ones have more red, but it's like a warmer hue to it. So it's more like fiery red versus these have a little bit more gray in them. So they're gonna be a little bit cooler in tone. And I did wanna take a look at this Chanel quad as well, because this is all masks. This is 308 Claire Obscure. And this is, you know, a classic Chanel palette. And let's see if I can fit this down here. These colors are not really necessarily going to be the same, but I just wanted to present it because it is a great palette for, you know, like all over matte looks. You can see that these are gonna be a bit more, you know, more taupey shades. This one here, the second shade is a taupe. This is more of like a grayish shade here. We have kind of a peachy beige, which is more beige than peach. And then that brown is gonna not quite match any of these. And then last up, this is a Suku. This was limited edition for summer a year or two ago. It's shade number 104, but I wanted to compare it to Undress Brown. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this closer to the undressed brown swatches. So the top two shades aren't really gonna go. We kind of have this like soft shimmery topper shade, which is very, very sheer. And then we have kind of this like warm beige shade, which is closer to this peachy beige in Wild Nudes, but not close enough. It's not quite a do. But I, what I really want to look at would be this orange and the brown down here at the bottom. So let's go ahead, we'll put the orange right here. So you can see how they compare. You can see the Sukas can be a little bit brighter, but they are very similar. And let's put the brown right here between the third and fourth shade. And you can see it's kind of in between the two. It's gonna be a little bit softer in coloration. And it's it's warm, but it's more of a golden brown versus you know this redder orangey brown. So yeah, you know, definitely some differences, but I have to say that's always been one of my favorite summer palettes. So I really like this undressed brown. You know, they do have a very similar vibe. All right, so I hope that was helpful. One more time, let's just go through the swatches. We've got these four here, 258 Wild Nudes. And then we have 910 Undressed Brown with this orange here being Suku 104 and this brown kind of in the middle here, Suku 104. Then we have the browns compared from 258 Wild Nudes here in the middle and on the ends, 910 Undressed Brown. This quad here is gonna be Guerlain Royal Jungle. This is Tom Ford Smoky Topaz. We have a couple swatches here, this lighter peach shade here. This is the Guerlain in Imperial Moon. So we've got those. And then this is from the Rose Topaz from Tom Ford. Over here on this arm, we're looking at Chanel quads. So we have the Tweed Fauve, the Rosé Brun, and then we have Cuivre, and then we have the uh, Claire Obscure. So we've got the, the three tweets that I purchased. So I hope this was helpful, and let's move on to lips. All right, so the Guerlain Rouge G lips, let's take a look here at the two cases. This one here is called Nude Rosewood. They do come with a piece of tape here to keep it closed in the box, and you have your double mirror here. So when you go to put a lipstick in, this is how the lipsticks come. So you purchase lipstick in the case separately. And this is heavy duty plastic. So, you know, if you don't wanna purchase a case, this will work to prevent your lipstick from drying out but this little Guerlain logo here will just slip over the case to keep it closed. And then if you're on the go, now you have a great way to apply your lipstick with a little mirror. So that case, this case here, you can see this is leather. It is called Nude Rosewood. And this other one is called Nude Berry Brown. And this is the other case. So Guerlain released three satin lipsticks and four velvets. And again, the one velvet I missed out on, but I do have the other. So let's take a look at those. And then we're gonna be comparing them with the new Armani Lip Power Matte Lipsticks, the new Valentino Nudes, and the Chanel Nude Shades that came out last year. 
So we're gonna start off with the satins. So this one here is number eight. And this is gonna be our lightest shade here. And I have to say, I really think this is a gorgeous shade for every day. It is brown with a touch of peach, but there's still a little pink in there, so it's not too warm. But it is gonna be kind of a, a warm peachy nude overall. So I think it's a really beautiful shade, a great everyday shade. This one here is another satin. This is shade 15. And you can see that this is gonna be more of a medium tone brown. And it does have some warm golden tones to it, but overall it's pretty neutral. It's a really beautiful mid-tone brown. I think it's a great shade, particularly for the fall. It goes very well with this collection. And on my lips right now, I have a light layer of number 19 on which is gonna be your deep, rich brown. And you can see that there is a touch of kind of like a, almost like a blackberry in there. So, you know, it's not quite as purple as eggplant. There's a little bit of red in there. And I think it really just makes it, it makes it shine. It's a really beautiful shade. It's one of my favorites in this collection. It might be my favorite, I think maybe, I, you know, I have to say I really gravitate towards these satins. I think number eight and 19 are probably my favorites. And then for the velvets, shade 139 is the one that I'm missing. It's a light peach. And then this one here is 159. And it's a really beautiful velvet that, you know, is kind of like a rosewood shade. It's rosewood with a touch more nude in it. And I think it's a really great shade. Now, I have to say though, that these lipsticks, the velvets, they can look a little similar here on the arm swatches. You can see they look a little bit more different in the lip swatches. We'll look at those in a second. This one here is 539 and look how similar that looks. You know, they are pretty close. This is actually gonna have a little bit less of that pink tone to it. It's actually got a little bit more of a warmer red hue to it in comparison. They're very close. This is a little bit more brown overall, but similar shades. And then last up, in the velvets, we have 819. And this is probably my favorite of the velvets. I really like this one. You can see this one has a bit more of a rosy, more of like a toasted mauve touch to it. So it's really more like a burnt mauve. So I think it's a really pretty shade. It's a little bit warmer than a true mauve, by the way, but it definitely has those mauve tones to it. So these are the six I picked up. We have three satins, 8, 15, and 19. Then we have 159, 539, and then 819. So let's take a look at these lip swatches here. And just so you know, if you purchase from the Guerlain website, they do offer free engraving for the cases. So just something to know if you're looking for a special gift, you can get something engraved on the mirror, the interior of the mirror on the case for free. So I think that's always a nice touch. As for these lipsticks, they are three and a half grams each. And we, these are actually gonna be made in France. There is no shelf life written on this product. For me, I like to keep my lipsticks as long as the t their texture hasn't changed and the fragrance hasn't changed. Guerlain lipsticks do have a fragrance, so this will be the same as always. And you know, it's kind of a, a floral, perfumey fragrance. And I have to say, Guerlain Rouge G formulas, they are definitely some of my favorite lipstick formulas. They're always very consistent. The velvets are nice. They're not drying. They're comfortable on the lips. I would not say that they're a hydrating matte or hydrating velvet, um, but they, you know, they don't reduce any hydration either. So they're comfortable. They're kind of just like a barely there kind of matte. They're not gonna be one of those super creamy mattes on the lips. They will set down and give you more of that drier matte finish. The satins are very creamy. There can be some feathering or bleeding with them depending on you know, your weather and your skin type and so forth. But overall, I have to say they're always very smooth, easy to use, comfortable, and you know they feel thin, but like there's still something there. And I do find them to be a tad hydrating. So I love the satin and the velvet formulas, but the satins have my heart. 
So let's go ahead and take a look at some comparisons. We're gonna start off with the Chanel lipsticks. So I'm gonna keep our Guerlain ones here so we can keep those separate and we'll put the Chanel on this arm and then we'll have to remove those for the next brand. All right, we're gonna start off with this. This is one of the Rouge Coco shades. This is 494 and is called Attraction. So let's go ahead and put this one right here. Oh, I'm terrible at swatching on this arm. Um, but here we go. You can see it has a little bit of that purpley vibe. It's also gonna be brown tone. Very, very similar to shade 19 in the Guerlain. I mean, this has, the Chanel has a little bit more red to it, but they are close. So I would say if you have attraction, you don't need Guerlain 19. This is one of the Chanel Rouge Allure Velvets. This is 178 Bronze Celeste. You can see this has some shimmer, but I did wanna compare this one as well. And you can see it is kind of like this purpley shade here, but you can see it's gonna be much more muted in tone. It's cooler, it's got some more gray, and it's obviously, it's a velvet with shimmer instead. So uh, those, those two I wanted to compare to 19. Now let's take a look at the Chanel nudes that came out last year. So I'm just gonna go ahead and swatch the ones that I have. We're starting off with number 194, Sensibilite. And this is gonna be like a soft peachy pink shade, mostly peach. And this compared to shade number eight, you can see it's significantly more peachy pink. It's probably gonna be more similar to, you know, being a satin version of the 139 that I missed out on. Um, but you can see it's a little bit brighter than those here. And then we have 195 Mise Anu, and this one I really love. It's just a nice, soft, light brown shade here, and compared to number eight, that's gonna be closest to number eight. However, you can see this has a little bit more of like a warm brown in there. There, there are more golden tones in the Chanel compared to the Guerlain, which has a little bit more peach. 196 a demi mo and this one here has a bit more rose in there it's kind of like a softer version of this velvet 159 so it's lighter and just a little bit softer in tone you can see how that compares to eight it's definitely going to be rosier 198 nuance and here you go you can see that this one is again just a little bit more pink than 159, but they're very close. I would say those are definitely the two closest. This is 199 in a tondu, and you can see we've got a bit more brown in here. There's even a little bit more purple. It is gonna be closest to 819, but you can see that it has more brown and it's gonna be lighter in tone. So not quite similar enough in my opinion. Up oh, here's another deep one, 204 Sensation. And let's see how this compares here to number 19. You can see we've got more like of a grape purple in the Chanel, where we have a little bit more of, again, like a, a blackberry shade in the Guerlain, but they are fairly similar. So those are pretty close as well. This one here is 206 Illusion. We're just gonna kind of move to the side a little bit. And you can see that that one here it's closest to number eight. Oh gosh, I'm trying to get those together. Closest to eight, but it's more nude. It's a nude peach, but it doesn't have that brighter hue, hue to it that we have in the Guerlain. And last up, this is 214 Instinct. And this one here has some shimmer to it. And you can see it's not gonna quite go with any of these. It's a bit of a cooler brown with a little bit of gold shimmer in it. So not quite a match with any of the Guerlain shades. All right, so just one more time to go through these. Up first, we have a Rouge Coco and 494 Attraction. This is Rouge Allure Velvet 178 Bronze Celeste. And then we're looking at our Chanel Rouge Allure nudes that came out last year. We're starting off with 194 Sensibilite, then 195 Mise à Nu, 196 A Demi Mo. 198 Nuance, 199 in a Tondu, 204 Sensation, then we have 206 Illusion, and 214 Instinct here at the bottom. 
So I hope that was helpful. One more time for the gear long. We have 8, 15, 19, 159, 539, 819. Let's move on to Armani. All right, so we're gonna take a look. We're gonna start off with the Lip Power Mattes from Armani, and we're just gonna swatch all of the mattes I have. This one here is 111, and you can see that these are going to, you know, this is kind of a warm new collection, just like this. So you can see this is kind of a version of eight. I would tend to say that this is most likely like shade 139 from Guerlain, just from the swatches. Again, that is 111. Then we have 112 here. And you can see this one is gonna be more of kind of like a burnt terracotta rose. It doesn't quite match up with either um, 159 or 539. It's kind of a little bit more orangey than those. This one here is 114. And again, this is gonna be a bit more of a vibrant peachy pink shade. Not quite as close as the shade 111 is to shade number eight. And then we have 116. This is actually gonna be cooler in tone. You can see it's it got a little bit more pink in there. It's gonna be closest to 159, but it's a little bit cooler in tone. This one here is 117. And you can see it's kind of like a lighter version of actually more of a lighter version of 539 because it has more of those nude tones in there, but this one does have a little bit more peach. And then we have 207. And you can see how that compares to 19. There's more red, less of the purple. And then these are two of the satin lip power. So this is 203. And that one is kind of like 539, but in satin form. You can see I don't really have anything to compare to the Guerlain 15, which is kind of surprising. And then we have 110 in the satin. Let's go ahead and put this one here. And yeah, it's gonna be, it's, it's more orangey. So it doesn't quite match those. All right, so let's move on to the Valentino. All right, so first up, we have 77A from Valentino. And you can see that this is gonna be a soft kind of nude brown with some oranges in there. But again, it's more orange than any of the Guerlain shades. Next up, this is 113R. And again, another beautiful nude. Mm, you know, it's still not quite the same as any of the Guerlain. I don't think it's a good match. And then we have 117. This is gonna be cooler in tone. You can see there's more red in there. And closest to 159, but it's more red. It's, again, not really the best shade match. We have 138A, which is more orange. More orange than any of these. And then we have 142A, just for completion's sake. This doesn't match any of these either. And that's it. So that's it for all of my comparisons. I hope this was helpful. I think overall the Guerlain Fall Collection is a really great set of neutrals, really beautiful looks. I'd love to hear your thoughts, what you're interested. Thank you so much for tuning in. Subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you very soon. Have a great day.